In the previous episode, I showed you how you can add Babel to your Node.js project. Now, we will extend that example by adding server-side rendering with React. As usual, code for the cast is available on GitHub and the text version is published on our blog. Check out the links in the comments below. Look again at our modified application from the previous episode. We have a Babel setup and in source directory there is an express configuration and one controller rendering just a hello world message. In comparison with the previous episode, I removed TypeScript to simplify things. So let's say we want to render a hello world message as an HTML page. To do this, we might want to create a function which renders the HTML template. So let's do that. Create a frontend directory and put the layout.js file there. This function for now will render a simple page with text as a variable. In the template we will use example from the Bulma CSS framework to make it more pretty. Copy the example HTML template. Fix the indent and change hello world to a variable. Name it hello message. Now use it in our controller. Let's wrap that with the function invocation. Run the server with yarn dev command which we created in the previous episode. Open the page and you see that it works. So we've just added server-side rendering to Express. Let's spice things up and add React.js. In order to add React, we have to install a couple of things. First of all, we need React itself, followed by React DOM. Next, we add a React Babel preset. Okay. Now we have to set up Babel to properly handle React files. First, add React preset in Babel RC. Next, set up Babel to transpile React files with JSX extension. We have to do this in Babel register. And in Babel CLI in package.json file. If you would like to know how Babel register works and how to set up the build command, Definitely you have to check out the previous episode. Lastly, we need to update nodemon with ext option. By default, it doesn't check out the JSX files as well. Okay, now we are ready to create the first components. Let's start with the application component. Import React on top of the file so we can use React components. So now create a new variable and within braces place the HTML content. Since we included React on top, following code is a React element and now we have to convert this to regular text. We can do this by running render to string method from React DOM. So let's do that. Now import this function from React DOM server package. Next, update the HTML layout to use it instead of hardcoded text. Wrap it with a div with id root. We'll need that later. Remove obsolete dollar sign. Okay, we are ready to refresh the page. Hit command R. And now we see exactly the same content, but render it with React. When we go back to the terminal, we see a warning. React uses class name instead of class. So let's fix that first. Now let's make the app dynamic on the front end, like a real React application. But before we move there, let's clean up our code base. First, Let's extract the application to a separate file. Create a folder called components and put app.jsx there. 
JSX is extension used by React components. Import React. And create a functional component. We'll fetch text from React props. Paste the code. Use the prop inside. And export the app component. Now let's update our layout function. Import created component and use it inside our application. Pass hello message in props. Now move the inner content yet to another component because we'll make it dynamic. Name it dynamic box and just like before create a functional component. Now update our app JSX to use this component. We are passing all props. Refresh the page to see if it still works. Hit command R. Perfect, it works. Go back to the terminal to see if there are any errors. As you can see, everything is okay. Now let's use React hooks to implement a dynamic counter. With state hook, create a counter. And set its default value to zero. Next, add a counter after the text and add a button, which will increment the counter. Set class name to button. And define its caption. When we visit the page again, we see that there is a button, but clicking it doesn't do anything. In order to change that, we have to hydrate the component on the frontend. In regular React apps, you render components, but when the content is already rendered in the backend, you have to hydrate them. We will use parcel bundler in order to bundle all frontend files together and send them to the frontend app. So install parcel bundler first. Now create the entry file which we will bundle. It will be equivalent of the application variable we used on the backend. So let's copy it. Create an entry JSX file. Paste the code. And change import statement to React DOM. Now hydrate the app. The first argument is a React component. The second is a DOM element. We will use div with id root, which we created before. Hello message is not accessible here, so let's stringify it for now. In app.js file, we have to configure parcel. Import it first. Now 
point the new instance to the file we've just created and use it as an express middleware. Now, when we launch the server, it will bundle the file to this folder by default. Create it now and ignore it by no daemon because otherwise we will have an infinite loop of reloads. Let's launch this command now. And now we see that parcel is bundling all our files to this folder. Now include our bundled entry.js file in our frontend layout. We do this by adding simple script tag. Refresh the page. And we see that it works. The last thing is the stringified hello message text. To pass the data from the backend to the frontend, we can use a global variable. Create a global state const and put there our text property. Change the text prop to global state and pass the new variable there. Now pass it to the global variable on the frontend. In the head section, we can create a script tag and fill global state with stringified data. Having that, also we have to update entry file to pass global state. And we have to update the app component because now it takes the global states from props. Next, extract text property and pass this to dynamic box. Refresh the page and it works. We have message fetched from the backend. Okay, this is everything. We've just updated an Express app to render dynamic content with React. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.